Club of Japan. Our speaker today is Yukia Amano, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The IAEA is a body that's had its work cut out for it in the last three years since the Fukushima calamity, with multiple missions to the site of the wrecked nuclear plant north of Tokyo, and many reports compiled. The agency is also heavily involved in the discussions over Iran's disputed nuclear program. Um, please welcome Mr. Amano to speak about these and other issues in the nuclear industry globally. Uh, I'll just quickly say, though, please turn off your mobile phones and other devices. Thank you very much. Amano san. Sorry, uh, Amano san will make some brief remarks and then we'll open it up to questioning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The last time I had the pleasure of um, speaking uh, to the Foreign Cor Correspondents Club of Japan was in December 2010. I had been Director General of the IAEA for just one month at that time. Three months later from that statement came uh, the Fukushima Daiichi accident. It was, of course, triggered by a powerful tsunami which followed the Great East Japan earthquake. But human and organizational failings also played an important part. Helping Japan deal with the aftermath of the accident has been a top priority for the IAEA and for me personally in the past three years. As nuclear safety, is a highly important issue, both in Japan and throughout the world. I will begin my remarks today by talking about the impact of the accident. The situation at the site remains complex, and challenging issues must be resolved to ensure the plant's long-term stability. Many people in the affected region are still living with the consequences of the accident. The IAEA has worked very closely with Japan. We help to channel international technical assistance. Our international expert teams assisted in areas such as radiological monitoring and food safety. We organized numerous expert meetings examining every relevant technical aspect of nuclear safety. The latest international experts meeting, which is on severe accident management in the light of the Fukushima Daiichi accident, starts in Vienna just today. We have been working with our 162 member states to implement the IAEA action plan on nuclear safety, which was adopted soon after the Fukushima accident. Just recently, final reports of our international review missions on decommissioning and on remediation of large contaminated off-site areas were made public. Both missions observed good progress in their respective areas and made recommendations. The IAEA is preparing a report on the Fukushima Daiichi accident, which will be finalized by the end of this year and shared with the member states next year. I welcome the way in which Japan is sharing its post Fukushima experience with the rest of the world. I encourage all the states to make full use of IAEA services in order to help raise the levels of safety everywhere. I am often asked if nuclear power is safe. This is a difficult question. My answer is that no technology is ever 100% safe. Nuclear is no exception. But I believe the lessons of Fukushima Daiichi have been learned 
both in Japan and internationally. Additional concrete measures, such as higher tsunami protection walls and undiversified supplies of backup electricity, as well as for water for cooling, have been put in place. The concept of defense in depth, which involves multi-layered protection and mitigation measures, is being more thoroughly applied. In my capacity, I visit many countries, usually 20 to 30 countries a year, and whenever, wherever I go, I, I try to visit the research in, uh, institutes and nuclear power plants. And I'm very much interested in uh, seeing uh, the differences before and after Fukushima. And I see lots of improvements. I believe safety levels at nuclear facilities around the world are now higher uh, than uh, they have been before. But we must never be complacent. Complacency is the enemy of safety. Please bear in mind that nuclear safety has always been uh, the responsibility of each individual country. It continues uh, to be so. The IAEA does not have uh, the same authority in nuclear safety as we do in nuclear non-proliferation, for example. Nevertheless, the global response to Fukushima Daiichi accident reflects a deeper realization that nuclear safety is an issue uh, that transcends borders. One country's accident is every country's accident. Effective international cooperation and, and the assistance of international organizations are therefore vital. The IAEA is playing a leading role in sharing a safer nuclear future throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, after the Chernobyl accident in 1986, nuclear power entered a period of stagnation that did not happen after Fukushima Daiichi accident. There were 437 nuclear power reactors in operation throughout the world last year, 437. 72 new ones are under construction, the largest number for 25 years. Growth is centered mainly in Asia, China, India, uh, but countries in other regions, including Eastern Europe, also have significant expansion plans. It is clear uh, that many countries expect nuclear power to be, in, to be an important part of their energy mix for decades and to come. They believe nuclear power can help them achieve energy security, boost their economic competitiveness, and help to mitigate the effects of climate change. The IAEA does not attempt to influence the decision of countries on whether or not to use nuclear power. It is up to the decision of each sovereign state. But when requested, uh, we provide comprehensive assistance to help ensure that nuclear power is um, used safely, securely, and without increasing uh, the, the proliferation risks. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, mention briefly that the IAEA's role in nuclear security, I mean, I now talk about nuclear security, is growing steadily in response uh, to requests uh, from member states. Nuclear security is about ensuring that uh, nuclear and other radioactive material, as well as nuclear facilities, are properly protected from malicious actions. You can imagine how devastating uh, the consequences could be if a so-called dirty bomb involving conventional explosives and radioactive material was detonated in a major city. The IAEA plays a central role in strengthening nuclear security globally. Our work covers a broad range of activities from uh, providing nuclear security guidance and supplying radiation detection equipment for countries to use at uh, ports and airports to helping uh, to protect major public events against nuclear terrorism. We are ready to, uh, to assist Japan in ensuring radiological security at the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo if they request us to do so. Japan has expressed intention to invite an IAEA International Physical Protection Advisory Service mission later this year or early next year to review its arrangements for protecting nuclear and other radioactive material. 
This will be a good opportunity for Japan、uh, to further strengthen its nuclear security. Next week, I will re、uh, represent the IAEA at a nuclear security summit in The Hague, attended by leaders from around 50 countries. When I last spoke to you, I said that I was keen to make people more aware that the IAEA is much more than the world's nuclear watchdog. That remains a priority for me as I start my second term. Through the IAEA Technical Cooperation Program, we help to make nuclear technology available to developing countries for peaceful purposes. Quite often, Nuclear is perceived as some dangerous, expensive, and huge. But in reality,、uh, there are affordable, user friendly, very useful technologies for peaceful purposes. We are active in, in areas as diverse as cancer control in developing countries. I have an enthusiasm in talking about it, so if you have questions, I come back to this issue. Child nutrition, the eradication of the tetra flies. Boosting food production and controlling、uh, water pollution. Water is very、uh, closely related to、uh, climate change and environment. So, isotopic technology has an important role to play in this area. To take cancer control as one example, cancer has reached epidemic proportion in developing countries, but many lack the basic equipment and trained personnel for treating the disease effectively. This means that Thousands of people die of conditions that could be treated if they lived in a developed country. This is a great tragedy. Two thirds of cancer deaths occur in developing countries. Two thirds of cancer patients in developing countries come to a clinic too late, so life saving treatment is not possible in these countries. The IAEA, together with、um, partners such as、uh, the World Health Organization, helps to make radiotherapy. Medical physics, nuclear medicine, and imaging services available to developing countries. We provide training for medical and technical specialists and help them to gain access to modern technology. Another example c e t i f l y infect, infect、uh, vast areas of Africa. They transmit、uh, parasitic diseases uh, which, uh, which、um, devastate livestock herds. And spread sleeping sickness among human beings. The IAEA deploys what is known as the sterile insect technology, which is essentially an、uh, insect birth control. Male flies are sterilized using radiation. They are then released、uh, into affected areas where they mate with a wild female. They do not produce offspring. This technique can eventually. Eradicate entire populations of tetra flies, as happened in Zimbabwe, Zanzibar in 1999. There are just a few of the ways in which the IAEA helps to improve health and prosperity in developing countries and contributes to the achievement of the UN Millennium Development Goals. Science and technology is playing more and more important r o l e in development, but that is not. Properly recognized. In the post millennium development goals, I would like to see、uh, that science and technology, including nuclear technology, will be widely used. And I'm going to talk to Secretary General、uh, Ban Ki moon in May. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the core functions of the IAEA is, of, of course, to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons. We do this by verifying. And that countries are using nuclear material only for peaceful purposes. The main verif verification issue on our agenda is recent, in recent years has been Iran. For years, my quarterly reports to our Board of Governors stated that nuclear material declared by Iran was not being diverted from peaceful purposes, but I also stated that Iran was not providing sufficient cooperation to enable the agency to conclude. That all nuclear material in Iran was in peaceful activities. Late last year, we started to see some movement. In November, China, France, Germany, Russia, Britain, and the United States agreed on a joint plan of action with Iran. 
the plan is aimed at achieving a mutually agreed long-term comprehensive solution that would ensure Iran's nuclear program will be exclusively peaceful. The seven countries asked the IAEA to undertake monitoring and verification of voluntary measures to be implemented by Iran, which we are now doing with the approval of our board. Separately, the IAEA agreed on a framework for cooperation with Iran under which Iran agreed to implement six practical measures within three months. Iran implemented them as planned. Last month, the agency and Iran agreed on the next seven practical measures, which are to be implemented by May 15th. As I told the board a few weeks ago, the measures implemented by Iran and the further commitments it has undertaken represent a positive step forward, but much remains to be done to resolve all outstanding issues. In particular, clarification of all issues related to possible military dimensions and implementation by Iran of its additional protocol are essential for the agency to resolve all outstanding issues related to Iran's nuclear activities. There has, there has regulatory be, been no movement on the non-proliferation issue of more immediate relevance to this part of the world, North Korea. It will be five years next month since agency inspectors were asked to leave North Korea. Nevertheless, the agency maintains its readiness to play an essential role in verifying the DPLK's nuclear program. I continue to call upon the DPLK to comply fully with its obligations and to cooperate fully with the agency. Ladies and gentlemen, the founding fathers of the IAEA clearly defined the objective of the IAEA, which is atoms for peace. Our work in, on Iran and North Korea is an example of our efforts to contribute to international peace and security. We have also been contributing to the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals by making peaceful uh, nuclear technology available to developing countries. The IAEA delivers concrete results and our work is valued by our member states. We will continue to pursue our multifaceted objectives in a balanced manner in the coming years. I'll stop here and we'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's open the floor to questions. Um, please identify yourself and your affiliation uh, and one question per person. Uh, my name is Hiro Krista, and I'm with Kokumin Shinbun, founded by Tokutomi Sofo in 1890. Uh, this is my third time to ask you questions. And my question is, um, according to IAEA standard, is it right to release contaminated water that we keep in the tanks now to uh, ocean? Because I have met a lot of uh, scientists, not, not Japanese, J Japanese and also uh, other countries. And I learned that um, the dose rate of the contaminated water is so low, and there's no harm even if we release the, you know, the contaminated water to the uh, ocean. So my understanding is, is it really true from you know, IA standard? Thank you. Generally, it is true. The, uh, it is uh, the practice of um, uh, the international community, countries, uh, to release uh, the contaminated water after carefully treating it. And each country establishes uh, its um, a standard uh, to uh, allow such a release. However, it is um, essential uh, to talk uh, to the stakeholders like the local community and um, uh, fishermen. 
it is not a viable option uh, to um, store uh, the, uh, the contaminated water without limit on the ground. It can even pose some dangers. This is not a long-term solution. Uh, in order to avoid uh, the, uh, the potential difficulties, we recommend Japan to consider the option to release uh, the water after treating it properly, ensuring that it uh, satisfies uh, the Japanese standard, and um, uh, after consulting with uh, the stakeholders uh, like the local community. Yes, it is true, and uh, that is a uh, part of the recommendation of uh, peer review missions uh, that we sent last year. Freelancer from Germany. You said 100% um, safety is not possible. But I think that, uh, there are not so some differences between uh, country between uh, like Japan with a lot of major earthquakes and other countries like uh, in Europe uh, they don't have major earthquakes and because in, in Japan it's not not really possible to predict earthquakes nobody nobody knew about thought about an, a nine magnitude earthquake in uh, Tohoku and nobody predicted the earthquake in, in uh, Kobe so how is it possible for, for Japan to have nuclear power with this kind of uh, dangerous, with this kind of dangerous earthquake? There is some, uh, no concept in the IAEA that some countries uh, can have nuclear power, but other countries cannot because of earthquake or because of other reasons. What is needed is to take uh, the necessary measures. Um, um, uh, just for example, you said uh, there is uh, no earthquake, uh, no serious earthquake in uh, Europe. I studied in France, uh, south of France, and I saw m lots of um, um, small villages completely collapsed uh, because of uh, earthquake. Could be hundreds of years ago, one thousand years ago. I mean, um, uh, any um, uh, any uh, uh, natural disaster can happen any part of the world. So uh, the problem uh, is uh, to uh, properly uh, assess other uh, dangers and establish other uh, uh, um, prevention measures. It is true uh, that uh, there's no 100% um, uh, safety in the world. In the real world, there's no 100%, no 0%. Uh, what we can do uh, is to prevent uh, the accident as humanly as possible, and um, uh, get prepared uh, for or, uh, uh, for the of the mitigation of uh, the consequences. And um, uh, uh, the IAEA establishes our standards. Uh, uh, lessons are being learned, and our safety uh, uh, is strengthened. But uh, uh, what is important is uh, that our safety uh, is a uh, uh, evolving uh, process. We need to improve uh, the safety continuously without um, uh, in avoiding uh, falling into the, uh, the complacency and to um, uh, learn lessons uh, from others. Uh, my name is Kyoko Hasekawa. I'm with AFP. Uh, my question is about uh, the Japanese uh, regulatory body's uh, uh, current uh, assessment of uh, whether to uh, restart nuclear plants in Japan or not. Uh, recently, the NR Nuclear uh, Regulatory Commission prioritized the Sendai uh, nuclear plant in Kyushu, and uh, rep it, it's rep uh, Japanese media reports that uh, uh, the, the plant is going to restart as early as this summer. And but uh, lots of uh, experts criticize the government's uh, preparation work for resumption. For example, um, uh, Mr. Hatamura, uh, who was the head of the uh, government panel uh, committee on the nuclear accident, said uh, recently uh, that there's uh, uh, the the, ja the government's plan is not based on the premise that uh, an accident can happen. 
And let's report say there's no uh, evacuation plans for not, the evacuation plans are not sufficient. So I my my sorry sorry about this long question. Mm. My question is, is that question? What, yeah, <laughs> yeah about your evaluation about the Japanese government's uh, preparation for, uh, for a restart. The IAEA um, uh, does not say who in Japan is right and who in Japan is wrong. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, the regulatory body uh, should be robust independent and well-funded. Before Fukushima accident, the, uh, we have uh, the, uh, the view uh, that uh, the Japanese regulatory authority was not sufficiently independent uh, from uh, the promotion side. After uh, the Fukushima Daiichi accident, the, um, uh, there was a reform on some uh, robust, more robust, independent regulatory body was established covering nuclear safety, nuclear security, and um, um, uh, safeguards. Whether uh, this um, uh, regulatory body is perfect or not is another question. And uh, for that purpose, uh, the Japanese authority, regulatory authority, has invited the IAEA's uh, review mission on their own activities and we are now preparing it. Uh, whether um, uh, the uh, Japanese regulatory authority is functioning properly or not is a matter uh, that needs uh, to be evaluated in the future. The, um, uh, another thing which is very important is that this robust independent regulatory body uh, is recommended to use the IAEA standards. This is not uh, the obligation, it is not <coughs> legally binding, but many countries in the world are using uh, the latest IAEA safety standards. And um, um, uh, the current regulatory body incorporates uh, the uh, recommendations of uh, IAEA uh, and IAEA, latest IAEA standards. It is uh, the, um, uh, up to uh, the decision by and the regulatory body uh, to decide whether uh, uh, the nuclear power plant in Japan is uh, safe or not. It is uh, the decision of the Japanese government to decide whether uh, to resume the operation or not. And the role of the IAEA is to help them to do the proper job. Jimbo. Thank you. I'm Teddy Jimbo with TheBillionNews.com. Uh, that's actually exactly the question I was going to ask you. Uh, Prime Minister Abe says Japan's uh, nuclear safety standards are the safest or toughest in the world. First of all, do you agree with it? And then in, uh, in particular, you mentioned the IAEA standards. Uh, my question is this. Does Japanese, existing Japanese safety, nuclear safety standard satisfies in your view or in the view of IAEA the IAEA's defense in depth notion of nuclear safety, especially on the fifth layer, <coughs> which calls for the formulation of an evacuation plan, Japan, Japanese nuclear safety standards does not uh, require the formulation of a safety uh, evacuation um, plan in case of a severe accident. So does it, does it satisfy uh, IAEA standards or not? Thank you. Broadly speaking, uh, the Japanese uh, standards are in line with uh, the IAEA standards. In some areas, uh, the, uh, uh, the Japanese uh, new standard uh, is uh, uh, quite strict, like um, uh, the uh, assessment of uh, um, uh, earthquake. However, it is not um, uh, the role of the IAEA to rank uh, the, uh, the standards. Uh, which country is number one, which country is uh, number two. That is not uh, what we are doing. Uh, what we are requesting uh, is to establish uh, the IAEA standards and recommend uh, the, uh, the governments uh, to use it as uh, uh, their stand, uh, uh, in establishing their standards. And if they request, uh, we send uh, peer review missions uh, to uh, examine uh, which are uh, the strong points of uh, each country's uh, uh, safety regulation, which are the areas uh, for further improvement. And this is some um, other work uh, which is uh, being prepared now. Uh, uh, um, what I can say today is 
uh, broadly speaking, uh, Japanese uh, uh, standards are in line with uh, the IAEA. Japan has requested us, uh, the IAEA, to review uh, uh, their standards and their uh, operation 